You probably can't see much of this, but it is snowing for the first time in a long time. And it is March. It's like winter has returned. In fact, this is going to be the coldest point of the week, according to the weather forecasts. And I'm just popping out to St. Martin's for a drop of diesel. So I thought I'd shoot this video. I was thinking about pointing the camera out through the windscreen, but I thought you might find it more interesting to watch me. I wonder if you've ever given any thought to prayer. It's the object of the prayer, the person that you're praying to that really counts. If you're praying to a piece of wood or stone, or to a figment of your imagination, you're not going to get anywhere. So you have to pray to God. And who is God? Well, God has revealed himself in the Bible, and he's certainly revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, this world is in the mess it is because of us. It's got nothing to do with social conditions. Social conditions come about because we create them. Deep down inside, we are all sinners and have been ever since Adam and Eve didn't obey God and took from the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. I was saying this morning in a different video that on a particular building that I filmed, there is an image of the tree of life. Well, life is found in Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I met someone who told me that salvation was a free gift. Now, you've got to recognize your need of having salvation. You're not going to want to be saved unless you know that you are trapped and you're in a mess. You have to recognize the wickedness that's in you. I was recently watching a video by R.C. Sproul where he talked about uh, how you've got a scale where you've got a scale of wickedness and you've got uh, being good at one end and Adolf Hitler at the other. And he asked the people in front of him, where would you put yourself? Most of them put themselves somewhere around about the middle. To which he said, you're all wrong. You should put yourself there, right beside Adolf Hitler, because we have all got the potential to be thoroughly, thoroughly wicked. And we all think things wrong, and we do things wrong. And there is no escape from that except for one person, and that person is Jesus Christ. He never sinned. He was perfect. He was the Son of God. And we owe him a debt. Our debt to God, actually, is our sin. Our sin will condemn us to hell and to God's judgment for eternity, unless we repent. That repent is to turn around, to change your mind. It is to be putting off sin, but you can't earn it. It's a response to trust. That's a response to trusting in Christ. If you trust in Christ, you recognise yourself for what you really are. The Bible says you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It means you'll know the truth about yourself. You'll know the truth about who God is. <clears throat> and we should be appalled at our sin and be always repenting of it and turning to Christ. Unfortunately, even those of us who have turned to Christ, we still have within us what's left of sin. Although it's been dealt a mortal blow and we are dead to sin, the nature is still there, it's not finally dead. We've to put our sinful nature to death. And that's a day-by-day -day process, submitting to Christ. Do you do that? If you don't, you need to consider it. You need to read the Bible and find out who Jesus Christ is. He said he was the way. I was watching a Keith Green video Keith Green, to those of you who don't know, was a musician and a Christian, but he 
had came out the long way, he looked at so many different religions and he saw that all of them accepted Jesus Christ the great prophet and he was one of the ways. But Jesus Christ alone said that he was the way and there was no other way. Well that's either true or it's not. You need to consider that. I have found it to be true. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Any other way is deceptive and is going to lead you into God's judgment and hell. The devil likes to deceive people. He's determined to take us down with him because he knows that God's final judgment will fall upon him. So you need to consider these things. Perhaps Jesus Christ is speaking to you right now as you listen to this and saying to you, you need to look at my word, you need to look at the Bible, you need to read it, you need to submit to me and turn your life over to me because I own it anyway. Everything that we have has been given to us by him. Everything that has been created has been created through him. We owe him everything, including our souls. And I was reading in the Bible a couple of nights ago that we shouldn't fear those who can only kill the body because what else can they do to you? But rather you should fear him, you should have a godly, respectful fear of God who not only can kill the body, but can then damn your soul to hell. But God is merciful. People have this idea that God is all fluffy and a long bearded old man and he's rather harmless. No, he's not. He will be the judge of all the earth and one day he will carry that out. And we need to be ready for that every single day. You need to be ready for that now because one day there will be those for whom he's bestowed his mercy upon them and they will, they will join him in heaven. They will worship him all the more. And those who have refused to submit to him will be condemned to hell forever. There will be no getting out of it. And there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, meaning they were extremely angry and in pain all the time. I wouldn't want that. I trust you wouldn't want that either. So, will you take the opportunity while God still hasn't unleashed his final judgment? And he's merciful right now in that we've all got time, time to repent, time to change our ways, time to submit to him, to trust in him. He paid our debt. He went to the cross willingly. He went because the Father had commanded him to do so. He went in obedience to the Father, died a terrible death, the likes of which we could never begin to understand. It was so painful, he cried at my your oh Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, being forsaken by God is something in we, this life we don't really understand. We might think we do, but we don't. Even in the worst of circumstances in this life, God has not forsaken us. But to be condemned to hell means God has forsaken you. And that you will never, never escape his judgment if you're not saved. So the time to be saved is well, you have the opportunity, and the opportunity is now, today. So, I ask you, will you do that? Or have you been putting it off? Do you trust in potluck, thinking, I've done enough good deeds, God surely will think I'm a wonderful person, he'll save me. Well, I've got bad news for you. You're not a wonderful person, neither am I. It's only because of God's mercy that he saves undeserving people like me and like you. But you have to take that step of submitting to him, trusting in him. Because if you don't, then one day you will bitterly regret that. Read the Bible. Pray about it. Cry out to God for his mercy. Ask him to come to you and introduce himself to you and show himself to you for who he is and to show you who you really are. You will be shocked at who you really are because even the best of us in this world is desperately wicked. The 
human heart is desperately wicked, who can plumb its depths? Who can really know the wickedness of the human heart? It's because of the wickedness of the human heart that we see all the evil around us, all the terrible things that happen. Because even the best of us is just not good enough. So, I ask you, will you turn to Christ now? Will you trust upon his death on the cross? Because he's risen from the dead. He's proved that sin had no grip on him. There were thousands of people who saw the resurrected Christ. They weren't backing mad. They were all witnesses and it's recorded in the Bible. They knew him. People like John, John the disciple, knew Jesus Christ before he died and knew him after he died. When he, after he risen from the grave, John wasn't barking mad. And all the disciples, bar John, as far as we can tell, paid for it with their lives because people didn't want to believe. Such is the wickedness of the human heart. They will do anything to resist trusting in Christ. Will you resist or will you give in to Christ and submit to him? Amen. I'll leave you those thoughts.